In this video, we're going to talk about the include level of detail expression. If you haven't watched the level of detail expressions video first, the general one, please do that before you watch this video. So again, we're talking about the level of detail expressions that occur as part of the Tableau order of operations. The fixed level of detail expression happens before anything happens with the um, visualization, but the include and exclude happen as part of the generation of the um, visualization. Now note especially when you look on the right that include and exclude happens after dimension filters while fixed happens before. You need to be aware of this so that it doesn't confuse you when certain things happen at different times. You might end up with answers that you're not expecting. Okay, let's talk about the include level of detail expression. Now, there should be a sample sales data Excel file that you have access to. I'd like you to go ahead and load that into Tableau because we're going to use it to kind of understand what's going on with a very simple data set. Now, let's just take a look at what this data set has in it. It only has 12 rows, and you'll notice that we have a few customers and some sales number, uh, some sales amounts. And Susie Jones has three orders, and Jenny Jackson has two, all right? Everybody else has one order. We'll see what that does with what we're, we'll see how that matters in what we're going to do in the hands-on. And the hands-on, what we're going to try to do first is to create two sheets, right? One of which has the average of all the orders, and one of which has the average customer size, right? The average of all orders by customer. Now, you'll notice there are two different numbers. The average of all numbers, uh, sorry, the average of all orders is $254.92. The average of each customer size is 382 because Susie Jones and Jenny Jackson are kind of outliers on the high end. All right, so let's switch over to Tableau and do this. So I'm in Tableau and I've added that simple sales data workbook uh, the Excel workbook, and you'll see that there's those 12 rows that we described in the slide, and Jenny Jackson has two orders, and Susie Jones has three. And it's going to be interesting to see how the average is different when we calculate at the order level of detail versus at the customer level of detail. All right, so let's just real quick do this. The first thing I'm going to do is just calculate the average sales. So I'm dropping sales in and I'm changing the uh, aggregation to average, and I'm gonna show that mark label, and I'm going to set the default properties. This is, a, this is a currency thing, so let's always display it as currency. And we now see that it's $254.92. And so this is going to be average by order. the average order really, right? Now, if we wanted to add in customer at this point, immediately things would change, right? Immediately the numbers would change. We could, we were getting average order by customer at this point, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna make a new sheet and now I'm gonna drop customer name in the rows. I'm gonna drop sales into my text mark. And now I have the total sum of sales by each customer. Now, if I switch this to average, that's not what I want because this is average for each customer. I want the average size of all customer orders. So if, if, if my, what is the average size of my customer's contribution to my profits or to my to my revenue now for that so I'm going to say I'll call this one average customer size I'm going to get rid of this apply okay and I'm going to go to my analytics menu here and I'm going to choose some totals drag them over get some column grand totals. Now that's just adding everything up and that's not what I wanna do. 
So I can right click here. Sorry, no, I can't right click here. I can mouse over. This is giving me the grand total of all of this, which is not what I want. So I'm just going to mouse over. Click once. You see where it says automatic here? I'm going to change that from the automatic, which is sum, to average. And that's getting me my $382.38, which is the average size of my customer. And I'm going to right click on grand totals and choose format. And down here, you see where the label is? I can change grand total to average. And hit enter. And there we go. So now I've got my two sheets. I've got my average order size and my average customer size. And until recently, if you wanted to show those two numbers in Tableau, you couldn't do it easily. You couldn't use this level of detail expression that we're going to talk about to be able to show both of these at the same time. All right. So if we wanted to compare those two numbers, the average order with the average revenue by customer, previously we couldn't do that because these these are these they're the level of detail is different in those two calculations. But the include LOD will allow us to actually do this. We have one calculation that doesn't include customer name and another one that does. All right. So the include syntax is the same as all the other level of detail expressions. Curly brace include the name of the function, then the dimension. Now, include without a dimension doesn't make any sense, right? So you're going to use a dimension. And then the aggregate expression. And so we're going to create a new field, which is called level of detail sales include customer name that has this formula. Curly brace, include, then what we're basically saying is add customer name. No matter what other level of detail is in this visualization, use that and then also include customer name and calculate the sum of sales. All right, so that's what this, this function is going to do. I'll switch back over to Tableau and we'll do it together. Okay, I'm back in Tableau. I'll make a new sheet, but really what I need to do is create a calculated field. I'm calling this level of detail sales by customer. And the syntax is going to be curly brace, the word include. Then what's the dimension I want to add? Customer name. Oops. Colon. Sum of sales. Close my parentheses, close my curly braces, Oops. and ah, there's that extra thing there. There we go. And now I've got my include customer name, sum of sales. Apply. OK. Now, if I build my graph the way I built the first one, which is just sales, right? This is doing sum of sales, or average of sales is what we're interested in, and showing the mark label. Now, again, the only level of detail right now is sales. But if I drag this in here, it's going to make the same calculation, but it's also going to include customer name, right? And so now we've got some. I have to make this average as well. And I've got to make this currency. Now, I don't have to do this for the default, but I like doing that just so that it's consistent across all of my graphs and I'll probably just drop it here so I've got these two together right I've got my average customer size as far as by revenue and my average order size by revenue these are two completely different levels of detail that are being displayed in the same graph which is 
kind of a cool thing, all right? So again, in contrast to the fixed level of detail expression, exclude and include are both executed after data blending, and they are completely dependent upon the visualization in which they're applied, all right? If you include a dimension in the wrong view, you're going to get some strange results, all right? Now, watch the exclude video when you have a chance to see the opposite of the include.